And there are a few crops, folks, that we need to take a look at. I remember once speaking to the agricultural minister of Israel, and I asked him, what do you guys do about rice? He says, well, of course, we import it. We wouldn't dream of growing rice in a country that doesn't have a lot of water. Now, we're subsidizing uh, the growing of rice, sedan grass, and uh, a few other water-intensive crops that take seven feet of water a year. And uh, I'm not sure that that's wise public policy. Uh, uh, but put that aside for a second. Uh, the water needs to be used in a much more efficient way. You can't, you drive up the highway and you see water in the middle of the summer being spewed up in the air and it's just so wasteful. That it's, it's just clear that our concern about water is that we haven't made the investment in the piping and in the technologies that will enable us to utilize uh, the water efficiently. That is a mission that needs a champion uh, with resources to drive home. And that's my plea uh, to you uh, this, this morning. And, and that is that uh, your ideas are terrific. Your standards are great. Uh, your knowledge is superb. Uh, but let the world know about it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Freeman, uh, thank you very much for that uh, presentation. I think, quite frankly, it's the most uh, comprehensive and practical speech I've heard on water in about 20 years. Congratulations, sir. I agree entirely with you. Now, you've been hanging out with the wrong crowd. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think so, but I think you're right. Metaphorically or not, I think we need to get out on the street. We need to be talking to people about the very issues you've been talking about. Re reuse, domestic reuse. Uh, industrial reuse and the irrigation issue with farmers and I'm, I'm with you all the way sir so thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you I, I fully agree and understand what you're saying I um, have a, a clipboard presentation I think that is very central to what you said and we have been allowing conservation or asking for conservation inside the home and the other 50 percent of residential water is spent in the yard and in this arid region, the southwest, it's spent in the yard spraying all over the grass, which is an inappropriate crop. But be that as it may, it's still it's unregulated. Uh, the pressure regulator belongs at the meter instead of at the house, and that'll eliminate such waste. And it's something that's been ignored. Uh, and I've been trying to pound the table on it, and I, I, I appreciate your, your efforts there. That's... I agree full heartedly. We have to look at our crops and we have to look at our applications and insist on some smart well, use. Well, let, me, let me answer it this way. Uh, it's the Department of Water and Power. There's a program that nobody knows about that we're willing to pay a dollar a square foot, I think, uh, for people that will switch from grass uh, to uh, native plants. The program is barely advertised. Uh, it's not being pushed, and that's why I uh, gave that little story about Franklin Roosevelt. Uh, you need to make them do it. Uh, you know, people in public office respond to pressure. And uh, the whole time I was there, I never got a single phone call, a single letter uh, from anybody, uh, you know, asking us to accelerate, enlarge the program. And uh, you have to realize that uh, there's always a million things for a utility to do, and it's you know trying to get people to get off of grass on the native plants is not part of their DNA. <laughs> and, and, and yet, uh, with sufficient uh, public pressure, uh, you know, renewable energy was not part of their DNA. Uh, but there's been sufficient pressure that utilities are now beginning to harness the sun a little bit and the wind and all. Uh, the same kind of pressure has to be applied uh, on the water side. And, and uh, I think this organization uh, could be a catalyst in trying to help make that happen. <laughs> 